Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to a video uploaded by the elder brother, Rakwai Kwam. All right, GMS Sphere, the Most High Seven, Ga. All right, subscribe and be edified. All right, brother from the London camp. All right, the title of this video, as you can see, is Israelites' religion come from Egypt, an asinine assertion. All right, which we constantly hear this from the pro-black, you know, back to Africa, you know, comedic science community. All right. In which you never truly get, you know, a uh, foundation from them or right, you never see them really going into the writings of Ma'at or the law of Ma'at, which, <laughs> you know, we're going to deal with aren't actual laws. All right. But confessions for afterlife. All right. Which is a bunch of garbage dealing with the Egyptian book of the dead. All right. But many, you know, so-called fake deep woke. You know, uh, Israelites, all right, who are in a lost state, you know, like Erica Badu, all right, she, you know, throws that out. You know, well, the Ten Commandments were stolen from, you know, the uh, 42 laws of Ma'at, you know, and you hear that, you know, with these individuals um, on Sanitor's channel as well, you know, which as I was getting ready to do a response to this, the spirit um, had this come up. <laughs> which this is live now, you know, Jabari, all right, the 42 negative confessions breakdown. So he's going into it. I'm going to play a, a part that, you know, pretty much came up. But um, as you can see, you know, these hawk, you know, dog headed gods and goddesses and, you know, the many gods and goddesses of uh, ancient Egypt, um, you know, these individuals like to make this asinine assertion that ultimately, you know, the Ten Commandments, all right, the Bible itself was stolen, you know, from uh, ancient Egyptian idols and ideologies and mythology and all of that. All right. Now, when you deal with Christianity, all right, you will, all right, find links, all right, with the idols of ancient Sumeria, which that's where Egypt got their gods from, ancient Sumer. All right. You know, and uh, Canaan and all of these various different gods and goddesses that we as Israelites were always told to stay away from. So in this video, we'll be dealing with a uh, response to this video. He also did this video here. Let me pull it up. OK, and we'll go to this individual's video as well. Let's see here. Boom, the 42 negative confessions were not the source of the holy law, all right, which the holy law, all right, was given unto us by the Most High through his only begotten son, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, all right, that was the angel, you know, that led us out of the land of Egypt and ultimately um, gave Moses all of the history, you know, um, that some of it we have, all right, as the scriptures tell you in Second Edges, the 14th chapter, and um, the law, statutes, and commandments, all right, because um, there's 613 laws, all right, and then you have the Ten Commandments, but there's also judgments associated with our laws. When you deal with these negative confessions of Ma'at, which we'll show you, all right, um, these were never used in Egypt as a, as a judicial law, and we'll get into it, all right, but yet, you know, it dealt with afterlife. You see, the law, statutes, and commandments were given unto us on how we were to live when we were on the earth. <laughs> well, we'll deal with it um, again. Uh, this is a, uh, as a matter of fact, let's play this individual here. All right. This is a uh, Sarah Garvey uh, cat out of the UK actually does some decent videos. Um, but overall, you know, um, the rest were blinded. You know, of course, you go to these particular YouTube channels and some of these individuals would have, 
you to believe that they know the truth and they say particular things that are true. But as you continuously listen to them, all right, they're going to go left at some point. And that's what they're set up to do now. The title of this video is the, Abra the Abrahamic religions are linked to Egypt slash Kemet. All right. Which um, <laughs> when you deal with the Abrahamic religions, you know, that's Judaism, Christianity and Islam, which are all filled with idols and perversions of the actual truth. All right. But we'll get into that when we uh, can, if the spirit allows. Let's listen to this guy and um, we'll get into it. Egypt is mentioned more in the Old Testament than Israel is. All right. Now, he, he starts this off by saying Egypt is mentioned more in the Old Testament than Israel is. All right. Now, I would need him to clarify his statement all right, as he pulled up this, you know, this um, here it says Egypt is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible almost 700 times and is referred to another 25 times in the New Testament, making it the most frequently mentioned place outside of Canaan in the Bible. All right. So maybe he's speaking as um, in the form of a landmass. All right. Well, we were slaves in Egypt for 400 and some odd years, 400 plus years. All right. And um, a lot of times when you see Egypt in the Old Testament, sometimes it's spiritually speaking. All right. Just like in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter it says we shall go into Egypt again with ships. All right. That's speaking of a spiritual Egypt, as Revelation, the 11th chapter tells you. Their dead bodies would lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. All right. This very captivity we're in in America is patent after ancient Egypt. OK. Which the Greeks and the Romans always ran. All right. To Samaria and Egypt to pretty much borrow their gods and establish their, you know, worship systems, which the Israelites, when we get into the law, we're going to show you we were you know, commanded to stay away from the ways of Egypt. Because when you go into Egypt, all right, there's many gods and goddesses. As a matter of fact, when you go into it, as you can see here, it is not surprising that there were over 2,000 deities in the Egyptian pantheon, okay, which is way separate, all right? And when you deal with these deities and how they were worshipped, they were associated with the, the you know, the, the stars, the moon we were always as israelites commanded to stay away from that madness okay and these deities in the egyptian pantheon which pan means all theon mean god all right all gods just like the uh greeks and the romans had their pantheon okay because that's where they went to get their gods they went to ancient samaria ancient egypt see some of these deities names are well known isis OK, which is nothing more than the queen of heaven, who was Semiramis at one point. You know, uh, uh, Ishtar, they went under various different names, Osiris, Horus, Amun, Ra. All right. And a, a nigga from Egypt will say, we'll see, it says, you know, Amun. All right. That's where they get a man. And that's a damn lie. <laughs> the word a man in the Hebrew just means it is affirmed. <laughs> All right. But they'll 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 see, you know, and this is a lot of this is barbershop talk, smart, you know, fake, you know, smart, dumb, you know, nigga talk. All right. And the best thing for these individuals to do is repent, but they're not because ultimately they're proud. Hathor, but Bastet, Thoth. All right. <laughs> Anubis. All right. Pata. All right. And there were many debates done. You know, early and, you know, from 2007 to about 20, you know, 14 between Israelites and the uh, comedic cats. And, you know, the comedic cats were always smashed because ultimately all they did was condemn the Bible. They never went into, you know, the, the moral code of the Egyptians and said how it would help us and what we should do. All they do is talk about ultimately. You know, the Bible's fake. The Bible, you know, this was stolen from uh, Egypt. That was stolen from Egypt. But they never go into where, when, how. And then when they do, all right, it's all associated with the idols that Christianity borrowed. All right. With Constantine. All right. Which Lord willing, we'll get into that. All right. He took from, all right, Samaria, you know, which is ancient Babylon. 
he took from Egypt and he meshed those gods, you know, the Canaanites and all of these various different nations. He took of those gods and meshed them, all right, into this newfound universal religion, you know, Catholicism. That's where you get the Catholic Church. And that's why there's so many idols when you deal with the Catholic Church, because it goes into these various idols. As you can see, 2000 deities were worshipped in ancient Egypt. OK, and come on now. <laughs> but we'll get back to that. And we also have to get into their creation myths, which have nothing to do with the Holy Scriptures. OK, let's go back here. He says Egypt is mentioned. Let's start over. Egypt is mentioned more in the Old Testament than Israel is. Then he puts this up and I'm, you know, I'm trying to figure out, is he meaning as a land, you know, as a land mass? And, and at the end of the day, OK, you know, when you go to how many times Egypt, which the uh, real name, all right, is Matazarium, all right, double straits, all right, Egypt is a Greek word, OK, and Kim goes back to ham hum hermetic science it just means heat you see and the sons of ham all right were always associated with some very wicked practices all right but egypt is mentioned more than 740 times in the old testament all right um but when you go to israel all right it's mentioned 2507 times so i don't know if he's speaking of the land mass of israel all right, compared to the landmass of Egypt. But I mean, when you go into the Old Testament, especially the book of uh, Exodus, you're going to see Egypt mentioned many times because we were bondage in that land. All right. But, you know, I would have to understand in which way he meant. But clearly the name Israel is mentioned more in the Old Testament than Egypt. OK, but again, even sometimes where you see Egypt, all right. That can be spiritually speaking in the Old Testament. OK. But anyway. There would be no Abrahamic religion without Egypt. That's a lie. There would be no Abrahamic religion without Egypt. All right. Now, when you deal with the Abrahamic religions, again, that's Judaism, Christianity and Islam. OK which ultimately are perversions of the truth, all right? But when you deal with, you know, what was given unto Abraham, um, you have to understand, all right, that when you follow the narrative, let's get Genesis, the fifth chapter, okay? What was passed to Abraham, all right, comes from Adam, all right, who was the, the first man on earth to be made in the image of the Most High, who had Abel, all right. Well, he had Cain and Abel. Abel represented the righteous. Abel was slew. All right. Then Adam had Seth. All right. And Seth had Enos. Now, at the time of Enos, when we get Genesis, the uh, fourth chapter in the 26th verse and to Seth, to him, there was born a son and his uh, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of Yahweh. OK, this is the same name that Abraham called on. All right. Once he was separated from his family, this is the same name that was given unto Moses. This is the same name all of our forefathers called on. All right. The scriptures say he that cometh first to the most high must believe that he is. OK, when you deal with calling on the name of the Lord, this is our so-called religion. OK, which we don't have a religion in the sense of a Christianity or Islam, but we have what law statutes commandments or moral code all right that we are to follow all right religion just means what you worship we worship yahweh bashim yahweh shai all right now when you look to call upon the name the word to call all right is kara all right to call to call out recite read cry out proclaim is that not what we're doing today all right we're entering back into this very stead all right. To, to, to cry for help. All right. We're crying on the Lord for help. We're reciting out of the scriptures. We're, we're crying out, sparing, not proclaiming the truth. All right. Uh, as the scriptures say uh, in Isaiah, the uh, 50 or Jeremiah, the 50th chapter. All right. Um, 
conceal not, publish the truth and conceal not, read aloud. So the, the, the summon, invite, call, commission, appoint to be proclaimed. So to call upon the name of the Lord, okay, was passed down from Adam, all right, to Seth, all right, to Enos, all right, and as you can see at the time of Enos, men began to call upon the name of the Lord, okay, and as you go through the lineage, all right, as we always go, you get Enoch eventually, all right, uh, Methuselah, and so forth, all the way to Noah, all right, and Noah had Shem, Ham, and Japheth, all right, and these are the nations that survived the flood, you see, and when you get Genesis, the uh, 11th chapter, okay, Genesis, the 11th chapter is where Abram pops up, all right, after the Tower of Babel was confounded, the scriptures give you the lineage of Shem, who had our facts at, all right, you go down the line, Selah, Eber, okay, these, all right, men through Noah, through Shem, through our facts had continued all right, the ways of righteousness, including the sacrifice, which the Egyptians, all right, worship the goat. All right. They didn't uh, uh, sacrifice goats. They worshiped it, as we'll, we'll show you. Um, and as you keep going, you know, this lineage, the sons of God, all right, were associated with the name of the most high God. All right. And the righteous ways, which were oral at this time. All right. So leading up to Terah. All right. Who Terah, all right, was born in the land of Ur of the Chaldees. That's where he resided. All right, this is where Abram comes. All right, you had Abram, Nahor, Haran, okay, and so forth. All right, and this is where, you know, the journey of Abraham begins. All right, which, you know, in Genesis, the, uh, so, so Abram was born in Ur of the Chaldees, all right, which was associated with many idols. So he grew up. All right. As we know, uh, in Joshua, the 24th chapter. Let's get it in the NLT. Joshua 24. And two, Joshua said to the people, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the river Euphrates and they worshiped other gods. And that's what was happening. So Abram was born to a family that worshiped many other gods. All right. But the Bible, as you get the story. OK. And I took Abraham from the other side of the flood, from the other side of, you know, Euphrates and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave Isaac, uh, Jacob and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. All right. And that goes into the story of that. All right. But. Going to it. All right. Abraham. All right. Ultimately, the Lord start dealing with him before. All right. He went into the land of Egypt. OK, so he's saying there would be no Abrahamic religion, you know, which, you know, that's Judaism, Christianity, Islam, which are all associated with the many idols of Egypt. And Sumer, but when you deal with what was given unto Abraham, the Lord separated him from all of that madness. OK. He told him to get thee out of that country and away from his kindred. All right. And ultimately go towards a, a land that he, that ultimately will be promised unto him. OK. And Abraham, you know, made you know, altars. All right. Uh, and eventually became circumcised. Those weren't laws in, in Egypt. All right. But he built altars to the name of the most high God, Yahweh. All right. But the ways that were returned unto him came all the way from Adam. All right. Through, you know, Abel, through Seth, through, you know, um, Enos, all the way up to Noah, who had Shem. All right. It's just that at the time Abram was born, his fathers had, you know, departed from the waves of righteousness. All right. They they ate that forbidden fruit. You see. So ultimately. What the hell is this guy talking about? OK. We'll keep listening to him. All right. But again. This is barbershop talk. OK. This is what what these pro black jakes do. They just throw these things out 
but they never really substantiate it. You see? I'm to- 100% totally convinced that there would be no Abrahamic um, religion without Egypt because... There would be no Abrahamic religion without Egypt, all right? Which what Abram followed, all right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai, which was passed down to Isaac, passed down to Jacob, who had 12 sons, okay? It was separate, all right? It was separate from the ways, all right, of Egypt. When you go into it, all right, eventually Moses comes on the scene down the line, and that's where we get the law, statutes, and commandments written on stone. But before that, these ways were oral. These were oral traditions, all right, that were passed down, all right? And as you go through many of these ancient societies, there are particular commandments, even in the Ten Commandments, that these different civilizations follow. But as we'll show you, there are only four of the 42 confessions of Ma'at that line up all right and we'll show you which in many cultures they said not to murder not to steal even today you're told not to murder and steal in the so-called american law right you're not supposed to steal all right <laughs> even though today you can just go and you know run up in the store and just walk out whatever the hell you want but let's keep listening then we will get into it egypt is mentioned more in the old testament than what it is um, you can go to the 42 negative confessions of Ma'at in Egypt and you can find the Ten Commandments within those 42 negative. That is a false statement. You see? Now of, all right, the 42, all right, laws of Ma'at, which they're not laws, all right, they're the, the 42 negative, all right, confessions, all right, dealing with afterlife, you know, as when you died in ancient you know, Egypt, you had the Egyptian Book of the Dead. You know, they dealt heavily with the afterlife. So after when you died, you go before the gods and you would have to confess. All right. To what you did as you were on the earth. And, 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 and if you passed the test, but pretty much you would be, you know, granted, you know, uh, uh, you know, the afterlife. All right. But as you deal with it. There are only four of these negative confessions which we'll get into it all right as you can see here uh the ne- the, the ancient egyptians net- negative confessions all right a comprehensive guide and fact sheet about the 42 negative confessions discovering fascinating facts and information about ancient egypt and negative confessions the declaration the declaration of innocence consisted in a series of denials referred to as the negative confessions okay and these aren't judicial laws that are used in, you know, ancient comedic, you know, judicial law. All right. It's basically a cheat code for the afterlife. All right. And when you deal with the 42, you know, uh, uh, you know, confessions, you know. Only four of them line up with the, the, the uh, Ten Commandments. Okay. Okay. And those four are, you know, murder, adultery, not to steal and not to bear false witness or not to lie. Okay, those are the only four of these 42 laws of Ma'at. Okay, that have anything to do. All right. Or any resemblance. All right. To the uh, the the Ten Commandments. Okay, And ultimately, there are no judgments associated with these negative confessions and we're going to break down how the negative confessions uh work as a matter of fact let's play a little bit of this brother's video and we'll go back to that guy sarah garvey as well okay but as you can see here the negative confessions the book of the dead which what is the book of the dead okay what is the purpose of the egyptian book of the dead Okay, these texts served as a guide for the dead to use on their journeys to the afterlife. See, the scriptures don't deal with none of that mythology and garbage. Each was prepared by scribes for burials. Okay, and they they can't tell you who wrote those 42 confessions. See, each was prepared by scribes for burials with varying uh, qualities depending on the scribe's skill and some were prepared with blank spaces all right to later fill in right uh, the name of the dead 
All right. So the bit, pretty much the book of the dead is dealing with the afterlife. OK. And it's not a single book like the Bible. All right. It consists of texts taken from the coffin text and pyramid texts. There are many different versions of the book of the dead. Wealthy Egyptians commissioned scribes to create a personalized version of the book of the dead in which the name was assert, uh, inserted. All right. Other ready written versions could also be purchased with the space for the name of the deceased to be entered. The following text that describes the 42 judges or assessor gods in a list of negative confessions are taken from the papyrus of Annie, which is one of the more popular ones. An ancient Egyptian scribe who commissioned a personalized version of the Book of the Dead. OK. All right. Fact one all right, of the negative confessions, the ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead was a protective guide to the afterlife that included text providing correct ways to address 42 gods of the underworld. See, none of the, the scriptures don't deal with none of this garbage, man. OK. The ancient Egyptians believed that the soul consisted of different entities, including the Ka, Ba, Aku. All right. The parts of the soul called the Ka was the life force, the double and spiritual essence of a person. The Ba was the roaming physical essence of the soul and yada, 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 man. All right. The soul entered into the hall of judgment called the hall of double justice. Or the Hall of Two Truths, all right, where the earthly life was examined by 42 assessor gods or judges. Each of the gods required a declaration of innocence from specific crimes and wrongdoings. Each of the 42 assessor gods or judges required a declaration of innocence or negative confession, all right, from specific crimes and offenses. The spells number 125 and 126 contained in the Book of the Dead explain the correct words to use to persuade each of the 42 assessor gods or judges that they had committed no evil or transgressed any laws. All right. It says success allowed for entry um, into the house of reeds, failure to persuade the 42 assessor gods that they had lived a life without sin. All right. To answer questions correctly. To use the appropriate responsible result in this part of the soul being given to the goddess Amit, the soul eater. All right. Presenting, preventing all elements of the soul being united. So she would eat your soul, I guess. OK. Um, so this is a, this is just an overview of the madness. All right. But again, they will just throw these comments out here. Now, let's listen to this, brother. OK. Let's get a little bit of this as well, and we'll get into more of it. That's too. All right. Lesbianism. All right. They would defy a defile the yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Moism, alphabetism. That wasn't all right. Now, in certain, you know, dynasties in Egypt, you know, you may have a particular pharaoh on down the line who may have spoken against it, but that wasn't a universal law in Egypt to not be a mo to not commit incest see when we went and got amongst these egyptians the lord always made it a, a um a uh point here in leviticus 18 and 3 all right this is what the lord told moses to say speak unto the children of israel all right leviticus 18 and 2 and say unto them i am yahweh your god after the doings of the land of egypt wherein ye dwelt all right. Ye shall not do. See, this is the this is what the Lord told Moses to tell the Israelites. And this is what we're telling our people today. After the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, ye shall not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances, man. And they did a lot of evil things, man. All right. And when you read the history, Jake always got into these practices. When you look at Christianity. All right. That is a form of Egypt. All right. Idols and gods going, you know, back, you know, the, the freakism, the moism, all of the weird, nasty behaviors that go on in a church. That's because they're under the vibration of all of those ancient Sumerian Egyptian gods. All right. It has a stronghold on them. And the Lord always told our people. All right. As we're reading here, you shall not do. 
after the doings of the land of Egypt. All right. And what did they do? They worshiped many gods. They worshiped the stars, the moon. They, they, they associated the, you know, the uh, particular gods and, you know, goddesses. All right. With, you know, the. Uh, all right. The uh, as a matter of fact, let's get it here. And wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter to give you a. And you could all you have to do is look these things up. OK, we're just touching on these things, but you look it up. Um, the people that were in the Holy Land, you know, before we moved into that land, were doing all manner of wicked practices. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 13 and one. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the most high and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that um, that is. All right. Neither by considering the works that they acknowledge the work master, but deem either fire or wind or swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be the gods that govern the world. See, <laughs> and this is how the Egyptians worship they, 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 the, the God of the air, the God of fire, the God of the, you know, the, the stars, the moon God, the, the, you know, the, the sun God, all of these various different gods. This is who they say govern the world. All right. And when you look at their creation myths. OK. It's against the scriptures. So listen to this. All right. And this can all be validated by going into, you know, actual books and study as well, because that's one thing that, you know, these e Egyptology cats do. Well, where, what's your source? They always ask you your source. You see, no source is true, but theirs. Therefore, this video will include five Egyptian mythology creation stories from four different locations. Creation story number one, Atum creates the world. Location, Heliopolis. Once, there was nothing but new. No See, and when you deal with the law, statutes, and commandments, our way of worshiping Yahweh Bashim Shai, it was a way, all right, that was given unto us, that was a standard to be practiced throughout all of the land of Israel and wherever we went. When you deal with Egypt, it differed from this region to that region. And it was, it was all over the place. There was no set, you know, laws. All right. That applied to all of the Egyptians and their people. OK, the, you didn't go into the judicial court and they went to the, 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 the negative confessions or the, the 42 laws of my. They didn't do that. All right. But when we dealt with something. All right. You you committed adultery. Well, there was a judgment associated with that, you know, associated with that, that we went into the, the, the you know, the uh, judicial moral, the, the law and ultimately judgment will be passed down. All right. Nowhere in the, in the Egyptian writings did they tell you to keep the Sabbath day holy. Again, out of the 42 uh, negative confessions, there are only four. That really go in, uh, you know, with with the uh, Ten Commandments, murder, adultery, stealing, and, and false witness, which, on a in, a in a grand scheme of things, even going back to Noah in Genesis the ninth chapter. Okay, let's get Genesis nine. Genesis nine and five, and surely your blood. Of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require at the hand of every man and at the hand of every man's brother I will require the life of man who shall shed it man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for in the image of God uh, made he man. All right. Dealing with the, the, the uh, chosen man, the chosen people. All right. There was a way we were supposed to live. All right. But ultimately, you see here, even going back. All right. You know, after the flood and the thing, the Bible doesn't hide from the fact that these different, you know, um, nations had their kingdoms. Yes, the Hemetic. All right. Which today, you know, they associate with African, the Hemetic, Hemetic people. Yes, they had great empires. All right. But when you go into the ways of those empires, they were detrimental to the Israelites as the Israelites. OK. 
Psalms 106 and 34, they did not destroy the nations concerning who the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works and served their idols, which were a snare unto them. You see, as we're showing you, all right, one of their idols was the goat. All right, let's go here. Let's get Leviticus, uh, the 17th chapter and the seventh verse. All right, these are the practices that Jake picked up in Egypt, Leviticus 17 and 7. All right, and they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statue unto them forever through their generations. Now, when you look this up, we'll get back to those creation myths. All right. The people must no longer be unfaithful to the Lord by offering sacrifices to the goat idols. All right. That goat, the devil, the horn. All right. Today. You see these these different wicked people who are a part of this cult on the left hand. They throw up the horn. All right. They're worshiping, you know, the Baphomet, you know, the which goes, you know, back to ultimately the goat of Mendes. OK, which we when we got into Egypt, our people. All right. As they were mingled among the Egyptians, they learned these things and they were offering sacrifices to goat idols. All right. And the Lord told us not to do these things. And all you have to do is look up the Egyptian, all right, worship of the goat of Mendes, or the heat goat often represented, all right, on Egyptian monuments as a ram identified by Herodotus as the Greek god Pan. All right, he was supposed to be the god over them all, all right. Was the god of Men Mendes, okay, and you can go and read into it, but ultimately the goat of Mendes all right, was something heavily worshipped in Egypt. And when they saw that we, you know, Israelites sacrificed goats, they looked down on that. Okay, they, they, they got hostile, all right, over us, you know, sacrificing goats. Because ultimately they worshipped them and built idols to these goats. All right, and that same vibration is back here today in America. All right, but that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time okay but um going back here let's listen to the this five creation myths all right now we have a creation story in the book of genesis all right and when broken down in its proper form you understand that the most high gave the blueprint to the allah Hayim, headed by his only begotten son to create everything all right in the heavens and on earth OK, and then once everything was complete. All right. He sent them starting with his only begotten son, start with Adam onto the earth as there were other people on the earth. And he gave Adam the breath of life. All right. The ways on how to govern this earth. All right. And the Bible follows that chosen seed from Adam. All right. All the way up. All right. To uh, Noah, Shem. All right. All the way up to uh, through our facts set all the way up to Abraham, who had Isaac, who had Jacob. These are the sons of God. These are the people whom the Lord chose to be nigh unto him. And when you go into the history, they've always had a problem. All right. With mimicking these heathen in their worship practices and linking it to theirs. Nothing but the waters of new and the waters of new were formless and they were dark. And from new, from the void of the waters sprang onto the first of the gods the creator of the gods, and all that is. Atu wished for bodily pleasure, so he pleasured himself. And from his seed sprang Shu, who is the heir. You heard that? He pleasured himself, meaning he beat off, jade off, J-A-C-K'd off, all right, and, you know, burst, you know, the different other gods and goddesses into existence. And Tefnut, who is the light. Shu and Tefnu were alone with Atu, alone on the primordial hill in the waters of Nu, and they became separated from one another. This caused Atu great grief, for he loved his children. Atu sent his eye to look for Shu and Tefnu, and while his eye was gone from him, Atu replaced it with another, greater eye. Soon enough, Shu and Tefnu returned with Atu's first eye. The first eye saw that Atu had supplanted it with another, greater eye. See, madness. Let's go to the second one. I don't even want to hear that one no more. Ra and the eight gods create the world. 
Location, Hermopolis. Before all things, there were eight who are the four and their consorts. These were Noon and Nun, Pa and Hauet, Kuk and Kaukat, Am and Amunet. And these together were water, unendingness, darkness, and the unseen, which is the air or wind. The four gods had the head of frogs, and their consorts the heads of snakes. Together, the eight gods hatched out from the primeval mountain that stood within the void of the waters. The eight gods made the nine and caused it to have its flood time and its receding. They made the lotus grow out of the waters, and when the lotus opened, inside it was a scarab beetle. The scarab beetle transformed itself into a divine child, and this child was the god Ra. The lotus is thus the birthplace of the... And see, it's important to understand that these myths, a lot of these myths were around before we received the Torah from the Most High through his angel to Moses. You see, because the sons of Ham, the sons of Japhet, all right, they also survived the flood as well. As well. So they had their myths and gods and all kinds of stuff as well, again, before we received the Torah. All right, but when we received the Torah, it specifically told us to stay away from this madness. Okay? Yes, a lot of these religions and practices were in the earth before we received the Torah. The Bible doesn't run away from that. We received the Torah in Egypt. Okay? The Bible is the perspective of the world, all right, from the perspective of the chosen people. This is what we believe, all right? And Moses gives us our history starting in the heavens, all right, and on earth with Adam, you know, how we fell, you know, and, and pretty much gives us the breakdown of what happened, you know, as, as we were led out of Egypt and other things, all right? The Torah is the foundation of our belief, all right? But again, we were told, all right, by Moses himself, all right, by the direction of the Most High through his angel to what? Not do after the doings of the land of Egypt. Okay. And when you go into the history, Ezekiel 20 and 7, and I said unto them, Cast ye away every man the abomination of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. All right. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. All right. Ezekiel 23 and 8. Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt. All right. For in her youth, they lay with her and they bruised the breast of her of her virginity and poured their whoredom upon her. So we have always ultimately. All right. Been, you know, uh, burned. <laughs> All right. Or, you know, put in separation with our power by following the ways of Egypt. OK, and we ain't finished. All right. So you look at these creation myths. They're all over the place. So who is Ra? And the lotus is the eye of Ra. When the child Ra wept, his tears created human beings. From his tears created human beings when he cried. Ra's mouth came all the other gods. Therefore, look at this nigga. From the eight came the lotus and from the lotus came Ra location Hermopolis. Before the world was made, there was nothing but the primeval mound, and a goose came to the mound. A goose came to the mound. This goose was named the Great Cackler. The goose laid an egg upon this mound, and when the time was right, the god Ra burst forth from the egg in the form of a bird of light. Ra then went on to create... And this is where you get all of that Big Bang stuff that has followed up until today. That all goes back to Samaria. It's a bunch of madness. Okay, let's go to the fourth one. In the nothingness that was before all of creation, first there was Patan, who was also new, the void of the waters. And from the heart and tongue of Patan sprang Atum, the first of the gods. And from the seed of Atum came Shu and Tefu, who are air and sky. From the seed of Atum and from the words of Atum came the non gods. But Patan was the mightiest of all, above all other gods. He was the one who first created the gods, and was the one from whom all other things came to be. Patan created Egypt and divided her into her gnomes. He established the temple. Let's go to the fifth one. Location. Look at this. Look at this nigga here. In the beginning, there was Canoe. Canoe wished to create, so he made the gods. And it was he who fashioned the egg from which sprang the sun. Canoe. So we don't need to even go into any more of that. This is why the Lord told Moses to tell us this. Stay the hell away from 
the doings of the land of Egypt. Let's get Deuteronomy 12. All right. And 30. Take heed that you do not. All right. Be not snared by following them. All right. After that, they be destroyed from before thee and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? All right. Even so will I do likewise. All right. And as you see today, you have the myth of Easter that links into everything we were just looking at. You know, the you know, the egg, which although the, the, the names were changed, you know, over the time and apply with other different myths. All right. This is that garbage. All right. That is being talked about here. See. They, they deem fire, wind, swift air, the circle of the stars, the violent water, the lights of heaven to be the gods that govern the world. And again, when you when you go into the scriptures, let's get Deuteronomy four. All right, and we'll tap back into the forty two, you know, laws of Maad. I just wanted to, you know, spirit just had me jump into this. Let's see here. Stars. Let's see here. Let's see here. Deuteronomy 4 and 16, lest ye corrupt yourself. I start at 15. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb in the midst of the fire. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image in the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of beast that is on the earth. All right. The likeness. And this is what they did. They worshiped all kind of gods. When you look at the plagues that happened in Egypt, they were associated with the different things they worshiped. The frogs. <laughs> all right. The um, the uh, I forget the name of that uh, fly. All right. It's right at the tip of my tongue. All right. Um, it's like a grasshopper type deal. But, you know, many they, they worship many things, man. The snow, the 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 sun, the, the, they worshipped everything, anything that you know they can see on Earth. All right, they would make a myth associated with a guy. We don't do that in our culture, man. Okay, why do you think these different gods had hawk heads and dog heads and frog heads and alligator heads? They had sex with alligators in Egypt. They use alligator dung as a form of birth control. You see. Madness. They had all kind of diseases. That's why they had to wear condoms. Women had rights in marriage. That's where women's liberation goes back to Egypt. Look how that's worked out for us. But anyway, the likeness of any beast that is up on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, <laughs> right? The likeness, of the locust. Yeah, they worshiped all of those things. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath. They worshiped the Nile River. Okay, and they used to the the to uh ejaculate in the Nile River. Let's look that up. Okay. See, we just making it up. You can look these things up on your own. In ancient times, the Egyptians had a culture of public masturbation, circle jerk, which is back here in America. It's what Edomites do. Associated with the fertility myths of their ethnic ethnicity, according to mythology, Adam ejaculated his semen and let it flow into the Nile River. All right. And that's what they did. OK, yeah, it is evidence. OK. Just look it up and do your own research. Don't take our word for it. All right. Look these things up. That's what they did. OK. Now let's just get to the point. Deuteronomy 4 and 19. Lest thou lift up thy eyes to heaven and when thou seest the sun and the moon. Why do you think Christmas is associated? All right. With a particular, uh, you know, uh, place in the, in, the, in the heavens where a particular star is at its lowest point, then it rises. That's dealing with the gods and myths of, you know, ancient Sumer and Egypt, man. Lest thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all of the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, 
which the Lord thy God have divided unto all of the nations under the whole heaven. All right. But the Lord have taken you and brought you forth out of, out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. So, again, we were told not to do the things that the Egyptians got into. Let's go back here. OK, so what Abram received. All right. When he was connected back to his power as he was raised as a Gentile, just as we were, he was raised in a household where his father. All right. Was, you know, worshiping those different deities. The Lord returned Abraham or Abram to the truth, just as he did with us. We grew up. All right. And all of this madness. But the Lord turned us back to his true name, his only begotten son's name. All right. And our true purpose, who we really are. So he don't know what the hell he's talking about. The confessions Ten Commandments within those 42 art in Egypt. And you can find the Ten Commandments within those 42 negative confessions. You cannot find the Ten Commandments. You can find four things that link. I mean, with murder, adultery. All right. Uh, stealing and false witness. All right. But again, these are not laws. OK. <laughs> that were used in judicial affairs. All right. As judgments in ancient Egyptian culture. OK. There is no judgments associated with it. Again, this was all for the afterlife, my man. Let's listen to the brother here. And the scripture says don't follow them now. Let's deal with these, these negative confessions of Ma'at, all right? Now, what this comes from is the Book of the Dead. Now, the Book of the Dead is a cheat code for the afterlife. It's a guide for the afterlife, which we don't believe in. We don't believe in the afterlife in the way the Egyptians have the afterlife at all in any way, shape, or form. There's no, there's no affinity with how the scriptures deal with when you, what happens when you die according to the, the way the Egyptians deal with what happens when you die. They're on a whole different form of LSD trip, okay? Now, I'm going to read this because it's going into the, all this madness. And this is why they would, they would leave the heart in the body and take out organs and all this madness. Mummification was crazy stuff, man, which we never did because we didn't copy Egypt. We, you know, The heart was placed on a scale in a balance against the white feather of truth. And if it was found to be lighter, one went on toward paradise. If it was heavier, it was dropped it onto the floor where it was eaten by the monster Amut and the soul then ceased to exist. <laughs> we don't deal with all that. <laughs> Come on, man. You see what I'm talking about? But people will make these these asinine statements and then it becomes uh, this meme culture. People just throw these things around and then it just becomes fact. And then, you know, niggas with money, they'll start to say it because they're proud against the most high. And then it just becomes the standard. See, the Bible comes from the stole from from Egypt. But then you never see these Egyptian cats really living these so-called principles out. What is the Egyptian dietary law? What is the law against a man lying with man? What's the judgments? We can go into the scriptures and show you these things. In our culture. Prior to this final judgment and one's reward or punishment, which again, in the holy scriptures, we don't have no heaven or hell. That's pagan philosophy. Pagan. That's not innocent. Right. And when you die, you go to the spiritual realm. Okay. You receive, you know, ultimately uh, your judgment in a form of what's going to happen to you. You, 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 you rest and then, you know, uh, three or four generations down the line, that soul is returned to the earth. All right. And ultimately receives its judgment on earth is the place of judgment. See, the, the, the uh, Egyptian, this thing we're dealing with here is dealing with afterlife and judgment in the afterworld or whether you could go or if you didn't pass the you know these 42 confessions and you were found guilty a particular you know monster would eat your soul if, you know it's madness man how in the hell is that helping our people today <laughs> what, 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 what exactly are, uh, did the bible take from that See, but when you deal with the gods of the underworld and all of that, that's where Christianity does borrow from Egypt. See, but we, the true worshipers of Yahweh Bashmi Ashai, we know and understand to be careful, all right, to stay away from that madness because that's what has bitten us in the ass since the garden. 
All right. These are all ways that have been passed down. See, after the flood, all of those ancient, you know, uh, ways that go back to the garden and all that <clears throat> ancient witchcraft was returned through the seed of Ham. All right. Through, you know, the Cushites, the Canaanites and so forth. All right. They started the rebellions against the Most High and they had some very, very immaculate rulerships. The Bible ain't running from that. The Bible tells you they had you know, the scriptures tell you Nimrod was a mighty one in the earth. OK, it wasn't just him, him and his people. And they conquered and they led rebellions against the most high, but it, it came to naught. See, but the chosen lineage, all right, from Noah through Shem was always amongst that madness through our facts had. See. Even as we're back here today amongst all of this madness. But as you can clearly see, this is madness, man. The scriptures. Oh, okay. There's a final reward and a final punishment. Like, no. There's just the lowest statutes of commandment. And the curse, all the judgments are on earth. Osiris, Thoth, and Anubis were conferred with the 42 judges. We don't have no 42 judges in, 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 in our, our team. Yeah, there's no 42 judges. And he's reading from here. All right, the negative confession, also known as the Declaration of Innocence, is a list of 42 sins which the soul of the deceased can honestly say it has never committed. And see, we have committed sins. But see, <laughs> we hope to be covered under the blood of Yahweh Shai. You see? What, 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 the hell, what the hell is this? And again, how does it help our people today? So when, when, you, when you die, you go stand before 42 gods and you have to read off this list and say, I've never done these things. And if you did, you're just getting eaten by some good, some some black uh, uh, nigga, uh, African Hamite monster. <laughs> you just eat your ass in front of everybody. Then the gods fly off. This is madness, man. Is a list of 42 sins, which the soul Okay, it's not laws. It's not 42 laws, 42 sins, which the soul of the deceased can honestly say it has never committed when it stands in judgment in the afterlife. Okay, the soul will recite these in the presence of the gods who weighed their truth in deciding one's fate. The most famous list comes from the papyrus of Annie. Okay, and again, these were not judgments or rules. All right. That were uh, standard in all of the land of Egypt. These things would differ from all right, each region. All right. When you deal with the law, statutes, the commandments. All right. They were given to the 12 tribes of Israel as a moral code, as a way that they were to walk, to keep them holy and separate from all of the madness that was going on. All right. With these ites. OK, these these wicked <clears throat> Ites was so nasty. Okay, let's get Deuteronomy, the uh, seventh chapter. That we were, uh, uh, ref the Lord told us not to even make marriages with them. Let's get Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. Okay. Warnings. When the, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it. All right. And have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. These are all Hamites. All right. Basically, we, uh, uh, you, you weren't supposed to show no mercy to them. Okay. When the Lord thy God shall deliver them for before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them nor show mercy unto them because the ways that they had were detrimental not only to the israelites to the earth okay as you when you when you get the history this is the stuff they were doing wisdom of solomon 12 all right and three for it was thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers both the old inhabitants of thy holy land whom thou hatest for doing the most odious works of witchcrafts and wicked sacrifices, all right? And this is what Sanetter and all these people are saying, we should go back to the, the African way. Merciless murders of children, which really is no such thing as an African. 
these are the sons of Ham, the Hamitic people, Ham, Ham, the Hamites. We're not Hamites. Okay? Devourers of men's flesh, feast of blood. See? This is the type of stuff that they were doing. So when you read here in Deuteronomy 7, when we went into the, to possess the land, we were supposed to kill all of them. Which was supposed to be, uh, you know, fulfill, you know, the uh, the curse of Canaan in Genesis, the ninth chapter. All right. But you should make no covenant with them, show no mercy to them, make marriages with them. You weren't supposed to do anything with these particular Hamite nations. All right. You should. Uh, this is what you should do. You should destroy their altars, break down their images, cut down their groves, burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are upon the nation of the uh, on the earth. Okay? <laughs> so, you know, the, the Hamites were wicked, man. They were nasty as hell. All of the nations, but the, the Ham was a special nasty. And see what Esau did, going back to the Greeks and the Romans, they tapped into all of that ancient wisdom of the Hamites and pretty much repackaged it and this is where you get Romans 1 Jake being mingled among them learning all of that madness <laughs> oh god so you can you know The negative confession deals appears in spell 125, which is easily the most famous as it includes the accompanying vin vignette of the weighing of the heart on the scale against the white feather of Ma'at. And see, this is what this dude was going into when I happened to look at this. I paused it. I just happened to see this pop up. Let's listen to him. Um, the the, the uh, noble known as Sunefer, <laughs> and you can see his heart being weighed against a feather. See? His heart is being weighed against a feather. And I think it's so interesting, and as you look at this scene, you may notice that the scales themselves are personified Ma'at. She has literally turned herself into the scales of Ma'at. This is powerful. Shrine members, what is the name? There's a name for these scales. What are the names of the scales of Ma'at? They have a name. Who remembers the name for the scales of Ma'at? You can call them the scales of Ma'at, but what is the? What are they named? When you read here, it is. We're in the middle of the east. The the the, the so-called white man getting ready to lay down martial law, bring the chip. Okay, the civil liberties are getting ready to be taken away. We're in the middle of an economic collapse. How does this help us? You see, now we're going into this today just to show you that, you know, this guy right here, okay, doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, you know, Sarah Garvey. But what is this? <laughs> let's, let's, let's finish him, and then we'll go back to a little bit more. We'll, we'll close this out. 42 negative testament than what it is um you can go to the 42 negative confessions of ma'at in egypt and you can find the 10 commandments within those 42 negative confessions the kushite comedic spiritual science and that science all goes back all right here all right it all started here for them after the flood, the first major empire on the planet Earth was started by, all right, the sons of Ham. Okay? Let's see here. Genesis 10, all right? And 6, the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Put, Canaan, all right? And the sons of Cush, Seba, and it keep going down. And Cush begot Nimrad and became a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, it is said, even Nimrod is a mighty hunter before the, the, the Lord. 
And when you go into the cities he established, you get an uh, understanding of what he did. Pretty much when you go into Genesis, the 11th chapter, this Tower of Babel, this was led by him. This is the same blueprint the elites are using today, but with more technology, you know, more deceptions, more miracles and everything else. But they had their science and everything else going back here. OK. <laughs> The EU, the, that's what their motto. Many, you know, many uh, languages, one tongue. It's the same thing. The same pat, you know, they're, they're, what, this, what they're doing goes all the way back here. This New World Order thing. The Hamites, the sons of Ham did that first in their own way. All right. And we have lessons going into that if you want more understanding on that. But um, madness. Um, the link between Egypt and all of these um, different uh, Abrahamic religions is too, there's too much link. It's not too much link. And you need to go into the links. Okay, go into the, 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 the ways of that the Lord told us to follow and goes into the ways of the Egyptians and link it. Um, a lot of people don't want to go down that rabbit hole. No, let's go down that rabbit hole. I would love to go down that rabbit hole. And see, when you go to the comment board, somebody asks them, why don't you debate somebody? It's like, I don't debate religion. It's, you know, but you're sitting here talking about, you know, making a statement. Get it? Because people want to, people are stuck with their beliefs. But um, if you think about it, uh, Moses was found where? In Egypt. There you go. Moses. And where, where, where are you found? In the UK? I don't know where you were born. I'm found over here in America was found floating down a river in Egypt and not only was he found floating down the river into Egypt but you realize that the rivers of Egypt it has two Niles it has a white Nile and a blue Nile one starts from Ethiopia the other one starts from Uganda which means that Moses was floating from either Ethiopia or Uganda ah uh, whatever that's conjecture that's just conjecture you're just saying again this is what these guys do they just talk see <laughs> they just talk all right and again the 40 you can't go into the the the, the 42 confessions of my eye and find the 10 commandments that is a lie okay it says here the negative confessions appear in spell 125 all right again you can't go into a, a bunch of ancient Egyptian writings and hear about these, these uh, uh, confessions as laws on how they govern themselves. The 10 commandments were how we as Israelites were to govern ourselves, but then there's 613 overall. Okay. And when you go into those ways, they were separate from the ways of Egypt. Incest was being done in Egypt. Sex on menstrual cycle was being done in Egypt. OK, women had rights in marriage in Egypt. They could, you know, divorce a man and go and marry another. They, you couldn't do that in the ancient. All right. Hebrew Israelite laws. There was laws on what and what not to eat. OK, what, what, where were those laws in ancient Egypt? But again, this has been an ongoing narrative that has people have been running around with. For ages. OK. Although the spell does not describe the judgment and the hall of two truths. <laughs> what is the hall of two truths? What the hell is that? The illustration is meant to show what the soul could expect once it arrived there at the next. All right. At, and uh, arrived there and the text. Provided that soul with what to say and how to behave. The confession is significant for modern day Egypt and understanding ancient Egyptian culture values in the new kingdom. But at the time it was written, it would have been considered necessary in the order for one to pass through judgment before Osiris at the D divine tribunal. The confession is thought, is thought to have developed from an initiation ritual, and they don't know where this came from. Even some of the top so-called nigga uh, uh, black Egyptologists who mock the Bible, they'll tell you straight up, we don't know the source of these 42, you know, confessions. Okay? 
but it's, it's found in one of the more popular writings. All right. And one of the spells of uh, uh, what's his name? Ani. All right. It's whatever, man. This is just garbage, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. The Code of Osiris. Let's see here. The coffin text. I mean, it's just all over the place. I mean, this this is not this is not what we were supposed to be doing, man. OK, this is all over the place. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see. Yep. The book of Annie. Now this 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 link with the uh Ten Commandments, the Hall of Judgment, you know, is little known of the great number of the forty two gods, but it is likely that they were local gods, each one representing a gnome. All right. <laughs> Remember David the Gnome? I think that was a cartoon, whose names were added to the declarations with the view of making forty two judges represent all Egypt. Names of the forty two judges, all right, you see all of them names. This is crazy. It's all over the place, right? Now, let's read this. <clears throat> Are the Ten Commandments taken from the 42 precepts of Ma'at? The 42 precepts or the 42 confessions of Ma'at are a list of principles named after an Egyptian goddess of truth, justice, and order. The precepts of Ma'at are found in inscriptions and tombs and some papyrus records. Some critics of the Bible claim the Ten Commandments were not originated with Moses all right, but were plagiarized from the 42 precepts of Ma'at. All right, neither logic nor history supports this claim. According to Egyptian religion, a dead person's soul is weighed against a feather on the scale of Ma'at. All right, now, are they teaching this? Now, he's going into it here, but when you go into these niggas' lives, they, ain't, they don't believe this shit, man. <laughs> you know who's really dealing with this ancient wisdom is Esau. OK, the, the 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 higher up elites, they are the real ones practicing this ancient Egyptian madness. The most these guys will do is Shaka Abmos putting that ponytail on the side of his head, which if you don't know who that is, let's look up Shaka Abmos. OK. This is this is as far as Jake will go with it. See that? That ponytail was the, the hairstyle of an Egyptian youth, a boy in his youth. He would have had that. If you look at um, it's a cartoon. My son used to watch it. I forget. Uh, the, it's dealing with, you know, Moses in Egypt. You notice the Egyptian boys had that hairstyle with that little ponytail. This is as most a, a Jake would do. Look at this guy. But to really practice. The, the sorcery and left hand magic of the Egyptians, the elites are doing that. These guys are just talking. And you notice all they can do is sit up there and really talk about the Bible. They're forced to now go into their beliefs because the Israelites are like, look, go into what you believe in. For years, it was just the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. That's pretty much how Sanetter gets the most of his views. Let's see if we can get this to come up. Hold up. All you would have to do is just type in Shaka Abmos. You're going to get a good laugh. As a matter of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact, man, the, 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 the computer didn't want to deal with that. Give me one second here. <laughs> yeah, he cut the ponytail off, but that's as far as Jake is going to go with it. Let's see if we can pull him up. Shaka Amos. Again, this is what this is what Jake is gonna do. You know the gold and the you know the, the you know the, it is these dudes are walking around with makeup on their face.
Come on, man. I'm not. You know what? I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna even go there. Come on, dog. <laughs> oh man, let's see here. <laughs> According to ancient Egyptian religion, a dead person's soul is weighed against a feather on the scale of ma'at. Only those whose hearts are free from evil are spared from the judgment. As a way of proclaiming his purity, the dead person declares the 42 principles of ma'at, each to a different sub-deity. The Bible ain't dealing with this. These principles are not laws in any sense. They are simply declarations. See, they're not laws. They are simply declarations that a person all right, has avoided certain certain behaviors each phrase as negative for example i have not swindled i have naked i have not taken food from a child i have not made anyone cry all right of course there are similarities between some of the principles in ma'at and the ten commandments in particular four of them any culture's moral code will overlap other moral codes to some extent for instance all right, the, Egypt, the Egyptian statements, I have not told lies, I have not committed adultery, correspond with two of the Ten Commandments. However, this similarity by itself is not evidence that one inspired the other. Just like they say the Bible stole the story of the flood from, all right, the, uh, you know, the, uh, e the uh, Sumerian text, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Basically, the sons of Ham, the sons of Japhet, and the sons of Shem are going to all have stories of the flood because they survived the flood. Duh. But this is not evidence that one inspired the other. What they list as long as 42 uh, precepts or confessions of Ma'at, there are bound to be parallels with other moral systems. Okay. The 42 precepts of Ma'at do not seem to have enjoyed widespread distribution in ancient Egypt. It was not a widespread moral code that they all walked by. Other than their presence on walls of several tombs, all right, they appear in one or two written Egyptian works, and those are spells in the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which is not one book. It's all over the place. But there is almost no historical documentation about how the ideas were used, different lists, or different places. See, we can go into our scriptures and show you, all right, where particular laws were uh, um, put in place. People were stoned, burned, <laughs> judgments took place based upon, all right, the laws of the Bible, man. All right, even when the Messiah was on the scene, what did they celebrate? The Passover. Okay, they celebrated Hanukkah. Okay, what's the origin of that? These we can go to these things within our writings, within our history. You can't go to too many writings in Egypt and hear about these 42 confessions. And these niggas today ain't following none of these confessions. All they do is swindle, lie, steal, a bunch of adultery going on. Hell, Polite is in jail right now for what? <laughs> all right. And a whole, a whole bunch of people. All right. He had that Egyptian paint under his eye. Which that's nothing. The pi There's nothing but a, uh, you know, a depiction of the pineal gland. That 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 uh, uh particular uh, let's see here. <laughs> the all seeing Egyptian eye pineal gland. That's all it is. <laughs> Oh, man, the all-seeing Egyptian eye. The eye of Horus is a sign of prosperity, all right, which has often been referred to as the third eye. The eye of Horus structure shows a resemblance of the part of the brain that sees to encompass the pineal gland. The ancient Egyptians are one of the first cultures to have many art of medical findings. <laughs> and, you know, Polite had this, you know, the... Um, drawn around his eye you know they had they wear makeup men wear makeup Let's see here all right the pineal gland the eye of horus this is good brother polite
<laughs> yeah, you see him with the <laughs> with the paint on his eye. You see, men walking around with paint and makeup on their face. Shaka Amos eye shadow. Like, what what are these dudes doing? This dude here, Jabari, seems comes across as a sodomite. These soft men. Then they just sit around and talk about the Bible this, the Bible that. Well, where, what are they doing? Where are they going? Where are their prophecies? What do we do? Should we take the, the jab? Should we take the haragma? You know, what's our way out of this mess? They don't have no answers, man. They're just talking. The regular part of Hurungair, what do they tell you the name of the scales are? Yes, there are, there's a name for the scales. Yes, said Jason, the Mekai, the Makait, the Makait. Spelling may be off. Well, I mean, be fair to yourself. The reality is you're trying to put um, a, a, an ancient language into English. And so we see Sam Jason and Sam um, Atan giving us the answer. The scales of Ma'at are known as... And they got all of this from the white man. Okay. Who's the father of Egyptology? Jean Francois Champouillon. All right, which there's 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 more. All right, but they're all Edomites when you look them up. Okay. These are the these are the ones who gave you Egyptology, and to this day. All right, they're doing tours with mummies talking about this is the great God Canute or the root and tootin and all this madness. All right, going around doing tours with these bodies. And look at his hands. Okay, look where his hand is. See? <laughs> these are all masons and, and weirdos and creeps. They didn't mean us no good. The fathers of African American studies. All right, uh, uh, Franz Boaz and Melville Herskovitz, two small hats who were at the forefront of telling you that your, your history goes back to Africa and you're Africans and you're the sons of Ham. Anyway, there's so much more we can cover here. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to tap into it. You know, um, at the end of the day, let's see. Let's see here. The 42 precepts of Ma'at do not seem to have enjoyed widespread distribution in ancient Egypt. Other than their presence on the walls and tombs, they appear, all right, in one or two written Egyptian works. Well, the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father were always talked about, all right? When our people went astray, it was the, the Lord used leaders to bring them back to that law. All right. But there is almost no historical documentation about how the ideas were used. Different lists in different places have different declarations. There is no official list of Ma'at's principles. See. Further, in contrast to the precept of Ma'at, the Ten Commandments are phrased as explicit rules, not suggestions. There is nothing optional about the Ten Commandments. Instead, they are very specific. You will not and you will. There are no archaeological or cultural reasons to think that the principles of Ma'at were adopted adapted into the law of Moses all right any suggestions that they were or just pure speculation okay the most common argument connecting the Mosaic law and the precepts of Ma'at relies on the fact that the Ma'at worship predates Hebrew culture and again we told you we got the Torah after the Egyptians had already done their things. The the ancient Sumer had already done their thing. You know, the, the, the writings and the belief systems of them, they were always out there. So, yes, we got the Torah after the fact. And what? What do you what, what now? What? Yes, that that's the part of the doctrine. We teach that. OK. But again, this is all predicated upon faith. Basically, they're saying Moses took what he learned in Egypt and made up his own set of rules. <sighs> anyway. 
The actual link between the 42 precepts of Ma'at and the Ten Commandments is not often claimed by actual historians. Connections between the list are tenuous, all right, tenuous, forced, and ultimately irrelevant to the question of whether Moses brought down from Sinai an actual message from the Most High, all right? So, yeah, this dude right here is off. He's off. He's wrong. And the Heavenly Father is going to destroy him. I'm pretty sure he ain't going to repent, although he does some decent videos. Sarah Garvey is off. All right. All of you fake, deep, woke, all right, Bible thumpers and all you guys who talk all of this crap about the scriptures, you're going nowhere fast, man. Okay. And the best thing for you all to do is repent, but you're not. As the Makaites. And you get that directly from the Reu Pert and Ruin Gear. That is the book that has been misnomered as the book of the dead. <laughs> when you read the text, you'll get a better understanding of the tradition. Okay. So, what are you going to read it for so that you can know what to do when you get into the afterlife? Instructions for the afterlife? It took them all this time to go into this, but they've been for years. They've been saying this for years that we stole the Ten Commandments from the, the negative confessions. This is madness, man. Yeah, look at them. Look at these niggas. Hey, good luck following these cats. <laughs> Shalom.